So a little while ago, I built a Windows XP gaming machine on this channel, and it's basically been my go-to for Windows XP gaming ever since. I actually play on that machine a lot, but there's one thing that I've been really wanting to do. I want to make basically the fastest officially supported Windows XP gaming machine. I'm talking SLI graphics cards, high core count, high RAM count, badass motherboard, just the works. Everything will be ultimate. So let's build this thing and experience Windows XP on really high spec hardware. Building this machine, I really only wanted four things out of it. Minimal RGB, high performance, looking cool, and official Windows XP support. Mainly because I didn't want to deal with pacing my own drivers or any stupid crap like that. So I ended up going with the X79 platform, with the motherboard being an ASUS P9X79WS. I chose this board because it has support for the Xeon E5 2600V2 series, and it has enough PCI Express slots for me to do whatever I really want to do with this. Mainly because I want to run 4-way SLI but we'll get to that later. And for the RAM, I went with 32 gigs of HyperX 1866 DDR3. Solid RAM, although soon it'll be 64 gigs of RAM, just because I actually want to populate all the RAM slots and make it look way better. For the CPU, I went with an Intel Xeon 2697 V2, a 12 core CPU. Now, I know this technically isn't the fastest, but it's one of the highest core count CPUs you can actually get that I know will work with Windows XP. And I went with high core count because I'm going to try editing videos on this machine. More on that later. And now for the graphics cards. The idea is I want to have four Titan Blacks in here, but we made a little mistake with that. A little while ago, I had a friend that went to China and got me some computer parts for super cheap, including the stuff for this XP build. And my friend got the wrong GPUs. So here's kind of what happened. The GPU on the left is a GTX Titan, and the GPU on the right is a GTX Titan Black. And while they both run on the same GK110 chip and have the exact same amount of memory, the Titan Black is actually clocked higher. So on the driver level, it counts them both as completely separate cards. This will not work in an SLI configuration. Honestly, I do not blame my friend for not getting the right GPUs because they look so damn similar anyway. But I do actually have another Titan Black. So we will be able to do two-way SLI Titan Blacks, which actually I think it came out to be a happy accident because there's actually some terrible scaling issues with four-way SLI. So I think I'm probably going to stick with two-way for now, but let's face it, I'm probably going to end up putting four GPUs in here just because it looks cool. And for the boot drive, this is one of the only things that I bought brand new for this build. I bought this 240GB Kingston SSD for our boot drive. I've never actually experienced Windows XP with an SSD before, so I figured this would be kind of cool to check out. And for cooling the CPU, I went with an EK AIO Basic 240. Kind of unfortunate timing, I bought this cooler way before I knew about the allegations with EK and things like that. In fact, I've had this sitting here for like a few months waiting for this build. So, kind of unfortunate, but it's what I got, so I'm going to use it. For the power supply, I went with the Corsair RM1000X, which might actually be a problem, because, well, think about it, four Titans, which can consume up to 275 watts each, and a 12-core CPU with a 95-watt TDP. So most likely, when I do put four GPUs in here, I'm probably going to end up upgrading the power supply to maybe like an EVGA 1600T2, or something that's kind of overkill. Better be safe than sorry. And of course an optical drive, because an XP machine isn't an XP machine without one. Also because our fresh copy of Windows XP 64-bit edition comes on a disc, so I kind of want to use it. But enough talking about the parts, let's actually get this thing put together. Now that we have everything assembled on the motherboard, it's time to mount everything into the case. And right, the case! I chose a Fantex Enthu Pro, and I chose this case because it's super big and I'll be able to do anything that I want to do in it. And also it has an acrylic side panel, which for some reason to me fit with the whole Windows XP build. This case was actually left over from another project that me and a friend were working on. So I just kind of had this case lying around, and I thought it would be the perfect match for a Windows XP machine. So now it's time to get the motherboard mounted, and after that, I took attention to the AIO, which took me longer than I want to admit to actually get everything assembled. But I eventually put everything in the case and got everything hooked up, so whatever. And it looks pretty good already. The next thing I did was remove the bottom shroud that was covering up the power supply. Then I installed the power supply and started routing all the cables. And you know, the cable management at the back is good enough, although I'm still gonna just slap the panel back on and not worry about it. I also went ahead and popped the front panel off so I can get my optical drive in. And I also went ahead and installed the boot drive. I might add a second 500 gigabyte drive in here later, just because honestly, I'm probably gonna be installing a lot of shit on here. So I'm definitely gonna need the space. Then I went ahead and put in two lovely Titan Blacks, put in that SLI bridge, put the bottom power supply cover back on, and now look at this beautiful looking machine. Now it's time to test this thing out. Uh, let's see if it works. Ah. Uh, 
that's not a very good sign. That's a, that is a really bad sign. Holy shit. What died? Yeah, that's not very promising. After that, I unplugged and took out both of the graphics cards, and I went ahead and unplugged all the SATA and Molex power cables. And then this happened. What the fuck? Okay, I am unsure on what caused that. Well, that doesn't really tell me anything. Zero, zero postcode. Okay, I'm gonna have one GPU connected so I can see if it'll post or not, because I just wanna know. So one of these PSU cables are not the right ones because these are, I wonder, is it the PCI Express cables that are not the right ones? Oh no, that definitely. So one of these modular PSU cables are not the right one. Thank you, Amazon. You fucking suck. Shit in a plastic fucking trash bag. Okay, hopefully it'll post this time because I would really like it to. Oh, that's not a good sign. Zero, zero, postcode. Fuck. I wonder if this motherboard's BIOS is not updated. I might need a, a different CPU. Do I even have like any first gen 2011 i7s or like older Xeons like to throw in here to update the BIOS? I don't even know if I do have that. Wait a minute, oh my fucking God. I do have first gen Xeons. Right here, this fucking thing. I think it has two quad core V1 Xeons. The only problem is, the SBC build and my server are both on top of this thing. Now, how do we turn off the server for my non-functional setup? IP addressing. Shut down. Oh, uh, looks like the TeamSpeak server is going to go offline. Hopefully nobody's on. Trust me, I am a professional. Oh my god. Okay, you need to work. Hey, well... You better work. Oh! Oh, it's cycling postcodes this time! E5-2643! Oh. Can I get it to BIOS? Oh no! Oh no! You know, I mean, I did buy the board in China, that is what I get. Well, the board's definitely from China. Oh, English! Since I got the system to post, I was basically almost ready to install an operating system. Except I kinda need SATA power to do so. So I went back to investigate the weird power supply situation. These SATA connectors are not the right ones and they're causing the entire power supply to short out. So I stole these SATA cables from another RMX power supply. And I'm gonna take these little shits out of here and give these a try. Beginning to think this power supply is just fucking garbage. The lights down here are still on. Oh boy. Okay. I'll give it a second. Okay, try it again. Oh, shit. Excuse me? I unplugged this! That's all I did! What? The only fucking thing I did was unplug the Molex cable. It is oddly stuck at that post screen, though. Uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I cleared the CMOS. Soften things around with the CPU fan configuration. I, you know, did what you're supposed to do and installed the splitter. So now these two fans are controlled by the same header. CPU fan error. Still? Okay, well, we have CD-ROM drive and we have disk drive. Yes. So in order to get that 12 core CPU working, I need to update the BIOS. So my original plan here was to install Windows XP with this CPU in update the BIOS, and then swap back the CPU. But for some reason, whenever I rebooted the machine, it would get stuck at this ASUS screen, unless I reset the CMOS again. So I ended up resetting the CMOS again, so I can get back in the BIOS to update it. And then I swapped back in the 12-core CPU, fired up the Windows XP installer, and everything just kind of worked. After I finally got all of that figured out, it was a very long cycle of installing drivers and updates. Everything went fine until I tried getting the NVIDIA driver installed. The actual NVIDIA driver installed just fine, although I'm having a few issues with it. One, it wasn't letting me enable the SLI mosaic, and two, every single time I boot up Windows, it stalls and gives me NVIDIA driver errors. 
Although I think these errors are for Nvidia Envy, which I can probably uninstall, but still kind of annoying. While I was trying to install Nvidia drivers, I got kind of curious. So I installed Super Meum and checked out one of my buddy's YouTube videos to check out 1080p playback. And of course it handled it like a champ. No frame drops or anything like that. It just felt pretty smooth. And also turns out that Molex cable that I unplugged from the power supply earlier, I had plugged into the motherboard and that was actually in charge of powering the SLI mosaic. I kind of wasn't thinking and I figured it would still work without it, but no, it, it doesn't. So I went ahead and plugged that back in and then it actually allowed me to enable SLI this time. Great. So now it's finally time to start trying out some games from this machine. With the first game being Far Cry 2. I played this at 1080p max settings and when I got in game I was very surprised on how much FPS I was getting. I was getting nearly 200 FPS. With it kind of going down to 130, 140 FPS here and there, and with areas where there's a lot more action going on I was still hitting around 90 FPS. Pretty good. Later on I went ahead and ran the Far Cry 2 benchmark, with this footage being recorded by an external capture card. And it looked like it was running pretty damn smoothly, with the end results being 138 FPS average, 209 FPS max frame rate, and mins only down to 95, with Loop 1 actually having the worst FPS out of all of them. And now for The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Honestly, it has to be one of my favorite games. I maxed out all the settings at 1080p with maximum anti-aliasing, and I was getting FPS that was really all over the place. I was getting anywhere from 70 to 100 FPS in the dungeons, and then in the tunnels I was getting 200 plus. I sat here playing Oblivion on this thing for a while, and honestly, I was really pleased with the results. And now for the original Assassin's Creed, which honestly didn't run very well on the $46 Windows XP machine. But here I can play it at max settings and still get 100 FPS. Yeah, this system is really overkill and I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. I also mentioned earlier in the video that I want to edit video on this thing, which is still something that I 100% want to do. In fact, the reason why I'm doing it is because I want to try daily driving this machine with Windows XP for a week and make it into a video, but we'll see how that turns out. And last but definitely not least, I installed Star Wars Battlefront 2 on this thing, purely just for fun. It has an in-game 80 FPS limit, so it's not like this game is pushing any hardware limits or anything like that. But of course, as you would expect, it ran smooth at 80 FPS. I've been playing with this thing a lot for the past couple weeks. And honestly, I've been having so much fun with this thing. I just, I can't, this thing is so cool. It's also kind of interesting to think about that this computer probably would have cost upwards of four grand back in 2014, which is insane, but that pretty much rounds it off. And I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Hit like if you liked it, dislike if you hate badass Windows XP machines, or if you just hate me. I have a lot of very interesting videos coming up soon, so definitely stay tuned.